Strawberry Jam Wine, how are you doing? All right, so we started this on June 29th, 2020. Today is July 28th, 2020. So it's been about four weeks. I have given this the swirl where you shake it up. I've neglected doing that for a couple of days on purpose because I knew we were going to do this. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm vana over here. Cause... All right, then I'll, I'll put my hands down like this. And you, <laughs> you can talk for me. Okay. I Whoa, I can't even talk like that. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. All right. So anyway, what we want to do is remove the lid and we're going to take a look inside, see where, where it's at. Now, I know this had a huge fruit cap and I checked that the first couple of days. It was kind of shocking how much there was. So I'm hoping nothing went awry as a result of that getting maybe dried out by now. The fruit cap seems to have dissolved almost. That's kind of crazy. Okay. Uh, let's show you what it looks like inside. So as you can see, the strawberries have lost a lot of their color. They're more pink and almost grayish pink than they were before. And there's still some bubbles coming up out of there, but you can see that the fruit cap has definitely broken up. So what is interesting to me is that this looks like we just put a bag of frozen strawberries in there. It really does. Not strawberry jam. And I, I just find that interesting. Mm -hmm. In looking at it, I can see through and see clear to the bottom. So there's just a bunch of fruit floating at the top that I have a feeling we're going to remove that today. And we're going to uh, give this a little taste and see what it's like. But first, you know, we're taking a reading. So first thing I want to say is anyone that ever says that you can't make a clear strawberry jam wine because of the pectin, they're wrong. Wrong, wrongity, wrong. Now, I do believe that pectin is a real thing, and it really does happen, and it does cause problems. I just don't believe it was such a big deal to worry about in this particular instance. It's slightly hazy. However, this is only four weeks old, and this is the first time we're touching it. So, I'm really not all that worried. Let's see. Our initial read... Well, not initial reading. Our reading on this is... 1.046 all right so let me let me write that down so that means if we started with a 1.128 gravity okay so this is at 11.7 abv already that's really impressive it's still got a little ways to go so this might do exactly what i was hoping it would do but you know what i need to do right now i need to see how this tastes now, if you are playing along at home and you are at the stage as well, when you take that lid off, you may notice a distinct odor. And yes, I'm I using smell alcohol. odor because oh, it's, there it is. It's not overly pleasant. It's a bit, a bit footy. I'm not getting foot so much. Um, once you really get into, give that a couple of good smells. The first smell I get, like the raw alcohol and a little bit of maybe a musty kind of thing musty is too too strong of a word but after a couple of sniffs i get strawberry strawberry it is pure strawberry and this is going to be sweet still too poker face i smiled My initial instinct on this is for four weeks old, this is very good. I, I like this already. The, the longer, the, like the, the finish, mm -hmm. it just gets sweeter and sweeter and strawberrier yeah. and strawberrier. And that's pretty yeah. cool. This, this, is, this is really cool. I, I'm, I'm impressed. So what we want to do now is we're going to rack this because, man, I just want to get that fruit out of there and get it into a regular fermenter so that we don't have to worry about it as much. So... What I do want to do, though, is I really only want to get the fruit out, but I do want to put it in a glass fermenter, get it out of the bucket, because headspace. I do believe it's close to being finished fermenting, so let's get set up to do that. So after some back and forth trying to figure out what to do here, I don't think this is really done yet, but I want to get the fruit out of there. There's a couple of options. I can scoop the fruit out, stir everything up, and then just move it to a gallon fermenter, or we can just rack it right as it is or stir everything up now and just 
rack it and not worry about the lease. Just let all the stuff go in. I think that's what we're going to do. So this is a semi-rough rack. New term. <laughs> All right, so we now know that this is at 11.7%. We know that it's starting to clear. We also know that it's at 1.046 gravity, which means there's still some unfermented sugars in there. I think it might keep going, so I don't want to just rack this and lose the whole colony. So I'm going to do a sort of a rough rack, but not exactly. Because in a rough rack, we would pour it through a sieve or something like that and keep the fruit out. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to mix this up first. So to do that, I need my spoon of unusual size. All right, now that we have that, I'm just gonna put this in here and mix it through. Now, if you're wondering why I'm actually mixing this up, it's because if I just siphon it out, I could be leaving behind a lot of the colony of yeast. I'm still gonna be losing quite a bit of the colony, but that's okay because this is close to being done. I still think we're gonna get enough to make it worthwhile. I'm probably breaking up quite a bit of this fruit too. And when I do the siphon, I'm just not going to be real careful. I'm going to put it all the way to the bottom, siphon it all out. I'm hoping we end up with about a gallon of liquid at the end. All right, you guys have seen us rack stuff a million times, so I'm just going to cheat today. We're just going to put the bottle down here. We're going to put the bucket over here, take the siphon, stick it in the bucket, put, the, put that in the bottom of the bottle. Yeah, see, there's so much solids that it might be difficult to siphon. It is possible I have made a logistical error. Okay, there was so much solids in here that it was actually disrupting the siphon, so I had to take the little cap off the end. Now it seems to be okay. Now, I'm okay with the solids getting in here, because it's going to clear out. See, it's, it just keeps breaking. It's all right, though. Don't, don't freak out. Just clear it and start again. Kind of makes you wonder if just using a sieve would have been easier. This is why we do these things, so you can learn from our mistakes. <laughs> right, this is not working. What? Don't judge me. Okay, so once this kind of situation happens, what you want to do is get a small sieve, like Derica has. Show them. Show them. They need to see it. See? Look at that. It's a small sieve. You put that in just to hold back the solids. Then you can get your auto siphon in there and start up the siphon. And now you should only get mostly liquid. Mostly. Enough that it shouldn't be too much of a problem. All right, so we did the racking, and you can see there's very little headspace now. So I'm hoping this doesn't ferment too aggressively, because that could get bad. But what I want to do is stick an airlock and a bung back in there and let it go back to work. All right, so as you can see, this is no longer clear, and that's intentional. I wanted to get as much of that yeast colony in there simply because of that gravity. If it was at like a 1020 or so, I might not have done that. But because I think it still needs a little bit more work, that's why we rough racked it very rough racked i might add there was a lot of solids and there's still a little bit left which we might throw into another small fermenter just to keep on the side maybe cold crash it and uh, you know drink it like in a couple of days anyhow this is gonna go sit under the desk for a while okay so this has been racked once and it was at 1.046 and it's been another month or so since we racked it so we want to take another reading make sure it's really done and we're going to rack it now there's some stuff floating around in this that is just lease and the remnants of the strawberry jam and all that sort of thing it's not on it's not unhealthy or harmful i just really don't want it in my wine so i'm going to rack this first then we'll take a reading i already know i'm going to rack it because there's as you can see here, there's stuff up here and there's this much sediment in the bottom. I don't want that in my wine. So we're going to get out a wibble or white bucket of levitation. Hello. And rack it. And interestingly enough, this is now a one gallon, right? Okay, so because I'm looking at a one gallon container with lots and lots and lots of lease in there, I'm not sure if our three liter bottle is going to be right or not. So I'm going to rack it to a pitcher first and then we'll find out from there. No big deal.
We know this pitcher is a one gallon pitcher, so we're erring on the side of caution. Exactly. Now, what's really interesting is there was a lot of stuff floating at the top, okay? And as I started doing this, it all started falling to the bottom. So I think there was just a little bit of maybe oxygen holding them up and they've fallen. Once they started settling, it was obvious that they were just strawberry solids. Oh yeah, that's all this stuff is. It's just the leftover bits of strawberries from the fermentation process. But the reason we're racking this again and gonna let it sit is all this stuff. If we just bottled this right away, we could have some more of this in our wine than I really want. So I wanna rack this off, let it sit for a while, settle out, clear a little bit more. It's got a little bit of a haze, but not too bad. Everybody said that this was gonna be crazy hazy. Well, it's not. All right, so because this was so pulpy, okay, this was strawberry jam. There's a lot of lease in the bottom. Now, I know a lot of people will be very disappointed with that, and I expected it. It was, it, it was, it was totally expected. All right, so now that we are at this point, I want to just take a quick reading on this to make sure that it's really done, and just kind of get an idea where it's at, and show you just how clear this brew has become. Um, I know the pectic enzyme and the pectic haze and all that is a real thing. I've seen it. However, I've not experienced it that much myself because it just doesn't seem to happen all that much to us. For us, it seems to be more the anomaly than the norm. Exactly. Okay, this was 1.046 last time we looked at it a month ago. It's 1.044 now. I mean, if I really look hard, it's 1.045. So I'm going to say it's finished, which to some people that sounds like a very high, very sweet number. I don't have such a problem with that, okay? Every brew is a little bit different. Strawberries can be sweet, but they can also be a little tart. That tartness can be offset by sweetness. So... It's a rough guide when you start looking at gravity as actual sweetness. But um, I just want to give a little taste and hold that up to show you. That's pretty darn clear. That's as clear as most of our brews would get. This is only, like I say, July, August, two months old. Yeah, this is two months old. This was started on June 29th of 2020. Today is August 29th of 2020. This is eight weeks. That's pretty clear no matter what the brew. Okay, smell. It's green. It's young. This this needs some time, but uh, let's give it a taste. Ooh. The smell is very green. The taste is not. The taste is easily 20 times better than the smell. It still has some aging to go, obviously. Oh, yeah. We haven't even bottled it yet, but but this certainly has some potential. It's actually quite complex. It, I was expecting a very, very simple, yeah, she finished it, so obviously it's not that bad. I was, I was expecting a very, very simple, strawberry-esque, uh, just a, a sugary wash type of wine with a little strawberry flavor. <laughs> this actually has more complex flavors than I thought it was gonna. The smell though, most people who make this, if you've never made anything before, if they smelled that after two months, would want to throw it down the drain. That's don't do that. Don't do that because it's primarily off gassing. The gases yep. created by the yeast during the fermentation process are unsavory odors. So <laughs> that's going to go away with time. Yeah. So don't freak out. Yeah, the taste on this though, like if if you got past the smell and you tasted, you'd be like, oh wow, that's actually really good. I can drink this right now. I'd like to see what this does with some age though. It's just going to be amazing. So. Now we're gonna rack again from the pitcher into that bottle. I think we have probably just about the three liters. All right, so just like before, we're gonna take the source and put it up on top of Wibble, and the destination will be over here. Auto siphon, just like before. Can you affix the tubing inside the bottle, please? Thank you. Every time we do a racking or bottling video, someone always asks, can I just use a coffee filter? Well, 
It's not the best way to go, okay? You can, however, I'd prefer you didn't for a variety of reasons. One of them being you're not going to get the lease out first off. It's going to take 10 times as long. We actually did a video on this. But another thing that you actually can do, and this is heavily frowned upon by the mead making community, is you can put a funnel in this and pour this really, really carefully, okay? As in, don't splash. If it splashes, you could be oxygenating. Now, I'm only saying to do that if you cannot get one of these or at least get some tubing. If you can get some tubing, you can fill that with water, you can do the siphon thing, much, much better than pouring. But if you have nothing, before you resort to putting it through a coffee filter, pour from one vessel to the other very, very carefully. They did that for like, I don't know, 9,500 years before the auto siphon was created. So, you know, it can't be that bad. It is kind of crazy how this does not smell good. It really smells super green, <laughs> like super green. <laughs> and I don't mean the good way, like from the movie. I mean, green. like this smells footy, okay? <laughs> However, it doesn't smell like rotten eggs though. It doesn't have that kind of smell. It's just very much the, that almost a tangy, sharp smell of a dry wine, like a young dry wine. This is not, dry it's it's actually quite sweet but the flavor is actually really awesome if you're watching things floating around in here that's again some strawberry solids that got transferred yeah Derek had tried to get some of them out with a little tiny strainer before we started racking and this is why we're racking it again to get all that stuff out it'll fall out of solution it'll be fine just to prove my point about pouring it you see me splashing this little bit in here right it doesn't really matter it's very difficult to oxidize something that's been done. Of course, you don't want to just splash it all over the place for no reason. But this little bit here, I don't want to waste that. That's like a mouthful. So I'm just going to pour it into the bottle. Very slowly. That was a little rough. You heard it, right? That was too much but there was only a little bit there. Not a big deal. Now we want to put the lid on this, but if you notice, there's very, very little head space. That means we calculated it out perfectly. This is three liters. It'll be about four bottles when we're, when we're finished. Okay, so we got our airlock back on. This is gonna go sit and bulk age for a while. Now it's bulk aging and it's settling out just that little bit more. It got a little bit cloudy as we started doing the racking process. I have a feeling this is going to clear out to perfectly clear. I have no worries with that. Even if it was only this clear forever, I'm good with that. That looks really pretty. It's a nice color. Looks great. Something of note, this came out to 11.34% ABV. I'm very happy with that. That's that's pretty respectable. Nothing I mean, to complain about. It'll get you drunk. Don't, <laughs> don't you worry about it, you know? Okay, so we're going to let this sit for several weeks, maybe even a couple months to clear out fully, then we'll bottle it. Okay, so about two weeks has gone by, and what we want to do is take a final reading on this, make sure it's really done, and then we're probably going to bottle it because it's looking like it's pretty ready. Oh, we're going to taste it too, just so you know. If I really had to call it, it would be 1.043, but I'm, I'm just going to say 1.042 for the sake of expediency. It was 1.044, so... Mm -hmm. So it went down two points. Okay, so that means it has actually gone down two more points over a two-week period. To me, that's close enough. Did I read it a little bit wrong last time? Eh, you know, so it's fine. I'm going to pour off a little sample here. We're going to take a taste. I'm fairly sure we're just going to be bottling this. Now, I'm going to leave that there for a moment. I want to show you guys something. The number one thing that we were warned about when making something from strawberry jam is there's pectin added to jams. There's a lot of pectin so that it sets. <coughs> this is about as clear as you could ask for for a wine. I see no issues with that. I mean, you can even see it here. You can probably see through that. This is beautiful. The color is not as red as I expected. Here it looks really nice and red. Here it's a little pink. It's got a pinkish hue. Pinky, peachy. Yeah, pinky, peachy. So, it's definitely got a little bit of the uh, new wine smell. 
but it it it, it should be sweet. <laughs> Either I'm getting used to the new wine smell. <laughs> Or I don't find it as offensive in this particular brew. I think it's a strawberry thing. We talked about this once before. Yes. She smells sweet, fresh strawberries. I smell that tart, uh, almost sourness that comes from strawberries sometimes. Like we've said, she loves strawberries. They're not my favorite thing, so we could be experiencing that. But I do recall a couple of weeks ago when we tried this that the taste was way better than the smell. And that is still the case. It has a little bit of a funky finish. Yeah, it does. There's a not quite bitter, not quite sour. Yeah, but then it just goes, a something. But then it goes back to strawberry. So mm -hmm. it's, like, it's got a very rich mouthfeel, though. It really, uh, really fills your palate. Really, very vibrant. I'm gonna finish this. The strawberry flavor is wonderful. I'm gonna attribute the weird, funky finish to its youth. Yeah. Uh, but all the other aspects, I am. Yeah, this gold. is this is only ten weeks old, so being that it's oh. made with some odd ingredients like you know jam, <laughs> I'm gonna say that with some age, this would probably be really really good. So I'm gonna take this sample and pour it in here. Um, everything has been sanitized in. The Red Buccaneer Sanitation. Oh, you're adding. More I'm just hands. trying to make it different. <laughs> I don't want to bore our viewers. Pretty sure no one's going to find that bored. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to put this up on the thing. Now, this is a three liter bottle, which we already know as I get down to the bottom, our siphon doesn't really. Careful of that last bottle. I, I'm, I, I'm working. I'm worried. I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really siphon super well, so I'm just going to do the best I can and try to get all of it that I can out. This is the three liter bottle, so it should be four full bottles. We have five just in case. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is that there's almost zero lease on the bottom of this, this jar. Like, there's barely anything. There are small bits of floaties in it, though. They're just going to be there. I, I don't think they're going to go away. It's just particulates from the strawberries themselves yeah, exactly because their cellular structure was annihilated in the jam making process. So to be able to get all of it out once we fermented it that on top of that, yeah. I, no, we're just going to deal with it. I'm not going to filter it or anything like that. Some people have been asking lately, oh, can't you run it through a coffee filter? We did a video on that, and it's annoying, so no! Yeah, by the time you run this through a coffee filter, you could have made five more brews. There's a lot of minutia that way that we just don't get caught up in. I don't worry that we lose a half a cup of wine when we make something. I don't worry about that kind of thing. I don't worry about it not going totally clear. I mean, I'm happy when it goes clear, but I'm not, like, you know, devastated if it didn't go clear. To me, it's all about the flavor and the enjoyment of the act of making it, as well as can I sit and drink this? You know, that's important to me. It kind of sucks to spend all this time and make something that you go, mm, I don't really like it. But it's very rare that we both feel that way. Yeah, usually one or the other might feel that way. There's other times that we're like, oh, wow, this is really good. And then we have to fight. Rah! I win. <laughs> I'm bigger. That's a joke. But Brian, yeah. I really like it. She never does that, by the way. So as we're getting down to the bottom, I'm seeing more floaties. Like, I think they were sort of just hanging around there. So we're going to get out what we can. I'm not going to worry about what we lose because it's going to be full of floaters. We could, of course, pour that off, let it settle, and try to get more. Wow, that just seems like a lot of loss, though, doesn't it? I'll drink that. So you heard that. Derica agreed she's going to drink the dregs at the bottom. Um, I'd have to agree. I mean, this is pretty well done. And that's that's a decent amount. I mean, in a three liter uh, quantity, that's that's a decent amount. I don't really want to lose that. In case you're wondering why we put it in a pitcher first, it was to eliminate as much of those floaties as possible, um, which, yeah, we could have just bottled until it got to that point. But this is so much easier when we're trying to do it on camera. Now, do you want to just stick to these or do you want to do one Let's of these? Let's do 750s. 
So we got our spring-tipped bottling wand, so I'm going to put it in the center of the bottle and push down so Brian can get it primed. There we go. And now I'm going to release the power over to Brian. It's going to take a few minutes to fill these. What I usually do is I let it, the liquid go all the way up into the neck, right around the area where the uh, flip top is. Pull it out, put it in the next one. That's why you use a bottling wand. It lets you stop the liquid flow. If you don't have a bottling wand, I recommend getting one. They're only a few dollars. They're not very expensive. And they do make this a whole lot easier. You can use clamps on the hoses and things like that, but you're going to spill some and you're going to lose more product. So people that worry about losing product in the bottom of the thing, you're losing even more when you bottle if you don't have one of these. Okay, so we ended up with three and a half bottles, which is not a problem. This one will go in the fridge immediately. Derek will drink it. One of these three is going to go away for a whole year, and you'll see that. Another one we're probably going to enjoy relatively soon, and one more will be shown in the tasting. We might even just put this in the fridge and use this one for the tasting. I think that's enough. So that way we have two more that we can kind of play with as we want to. But if you enjoyed this video, we have almost 300 videos on wine, cider, beer, and mead making all over our channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.